What is up, guys? It is Power Bang, and today we're going to talk about WHF winning the NIP Championship of the World. Uh, the not in playoffs. It's basically the CWL Consolation Championship WHF brought at home. All right, guys, so we are going to recap the Powercock versus WHF NIP Consolation Championship War went down this last weekend, uh, and basically we're going to jump right into the action. I've heard a lot of comments on the channel requesting 10 versus 11 action. I recorded all of those. We had five Town Hall 11s in this war, so we had uh, a really good performance here. It was probably the difference in the war, and I will explain that as we get into this video. So you'll see that maybe tomorrow... Kind of depends on how the rest of this week rolls out. You guys will probably see what I'm talking about soon. But we've got Steel Balls versus Humba Ne Sauce, however you pronounce that. He's bringing the Pekkas. He's got two Pekkas on each side of this base. Notice that long, slender base. And he's going to basically just try to put those P.E.K.K.A.s right down the middle. So, and the jump spell goes, going to get those P.E.K.K.A.s into the queen. He's got four of them. Two healers on each one. Uh, the rage spell is kind of keeping everything up alive just perfectly. The balloon in there just chilling in the poison. Ultimately going to go down to the queen. So she's going to take it down here in just a moment. Looks like the poison is going to take it out before the queen pops the hound. Now the hound's popped. We've got bowlers. But the problem is, look at the archer tower that did not go down. And now we're uh, we're scrambling because the, the P.E.K.K.A.s were designed to take that second jump spell there. And that was going to open up pathing to both of the Inferno Towers. Everything was going to be hunky-dory. But no. Is anything ever easy with the P.E.K.K.A.s? I always tell guys that it's not you. Or it's not the Pekkas, it's you with the funneling. And it turns out to be true here. Steel Ball's having to re-just uh, plan the whole attack on the fly. So the healers kind of keeping everything alive here. And they are finally shot down. The queen working through the wall. Notice the timing here as the Pekkas go around the corner. Pops the king ability and uses the heal spell there inside of that uh, wizard tower. Everything's staying alive. And he's getting a great push there from the extra barbarians uh, taking out that king. The pack has continued to work, and he trickles in just a few hog riders that he brought from the previous, uh, you know, the army slots there, drops them in, takes out those defenses super, super efficiently. The hog riders continue to weaken up defenses, and notice he's got two hogs left with four balloons still left in the bag. Uh, but the trick is here, guys, is those packas are still pretty much at full health, all four of them still alive. And sends in the uh, the hog riders as soon as all of the tanking is guaranteed for those uh, those hogs. They get in, take out a couple of defenses here, and then he's just gonna wait. The king's down, but we have four pekkas alive. Looks like he's down to three pekkas as the Tesla and Cannon take care of the first one in. Now they're down to one point defense, and as those pekkas are working through the wall, time is getting short. So he sends in the balloons from the left side, and even though they're gonna be under fire a little bit by that air. Defense. He's got enough of them in in time to get to that level two Inferno Tower, take it out while the Pekkas finish off the air defense, and that is going to be a three star for the good guys. So you guys have been requesting Town Hall 11 action as well, and while there was no 11 versus 11 action per se in this war, we did have some 11 versus 10 action. Now most of the attacks were the bitch or the bullers and witches or bewitched or uh, Jai Wee Bo or whatever the heck you want to call it, but uh, I picked one that was not a Bowlers and Witches attack. Uh, this was the attack by me. This was 36 balloons. You can never have enough uh, balloons. Always bring more balloons. That's what I'm always preaching. So anyways, uh, I've had the bowler kind of skipping rocks onto an air defense. Used the quake on the right side of that base to take it out. So one air defense down. Backing up the king with wizards to take out a second air defense. And then using the queen to go ahead and trim some defenses for pathing. Uh, ultimately for these balloons as they come in. So we start sending in the balloons. We've only got one lava hound as part of this army composition. So it comes in kind of late. A few of the balloons are going to get shot down. But that's okay because we have 36 balloons. 
balloons. It's going to be fine. So Minion's in behind. The Warden kind of skews off to the, the side a little bit. And so I drop a couple of trailing balloons. So hopefully the, <laughs> the Warden locks on and uh, looks like we're going to miss that Inferno Tower. So we drop in three trailing balloons there to directly target it. And they will kind of find their way in, as you can see, right there to go ahead and get the Inferno Tower taken out. Grand Warden Pup. Pops the ability on that upper right side. Things looking good. Check out the bottom now. We send in four balloons to directly target the air defense. Using a hay spell to kind of skip those balloons along. Everything looking good. Backside balloons come in, just completely destroying the base. Minions are sweeping their way around. And this ends up being a very, very uh, dominant raid in this one. For the balloons, this is my personal preference. There's so much more control over the attack than there is with bowlers and witches where you literally drop all your troops on the field in the first five seconds of the raid and then cross your fingers that they do the job. Now, Powercock found out that that is, it is not what happened in this war. They really, really were heavy on the bowlers and witches, and we knew they would be coming in. So we tried to build a bunch of bases that would stand up to the challenge, and we were able to prevent five Town Hall 11 three-stars on our uh, Town Hall 10s, which ultimately decided the war, because the, we outplayed them at Town Hall 9, they outplayed us substantially at Town Hall 10, and that is normally where the war is won, is at the Town Hall 10 level. Now, we went against the grain here, and we actually won this war with our Town Hall 11s. The 80% dip rate was much more favorable than the 50% dip rate that Powercock had. In addition to that, the defense is what won the war. Isn't that right, guys? Defense wins championships. It looked like the, uh, the defense is what kind of set us apart in this war. Uh, uh, although it was very close, it could have gone either way, uh, but just towards the end, too many attacks were used on our 11s and uh, just ultimately uh, got away from there a little bit. So, you know, great war to Powercock. You guys are always a fun opponent to play against. Nothing but good things to say about you guys. Hopefully we can do this again next season, you know, maybe in the real playoffs. We'll see. So we're going to check out a little bit of Town Hall 9 action now. We've got Mike Wu Joe, uh, German efficiency at its finest, kind of bringing the hogs through this base. And this got a little bit out of hand because that upper group of hogs caught that bomb a little bit, forces the heal way early instead of having that for the last couple of wizard towers as well as the final giant bomb placement. Spring traps are getting him. He's got the king on him. He's going to eat a uh, bomb here from the bomb tower. So things looking a little bit sketchy, but check this out. He uses a healer transfer on the bottom three hogs, and check that out. Backside hogs are going to get him through this base, tanking the wizard tower as well as uh, the expo there. Even takes out a giant bomb, but still is healed back up to full. The backside balloon comes in, takes out the final defense. WHF had a lot of Town Hall 9. I don't want to call it luck, but a lot of things went our way. Uh, we had a ridiculous ridiculous hit rate at Town Hall 9. We came out and I think got, uh, I want to say it was 14 of the first 16 bases taken out and it was just like, wow, you know, this war is really going good. And then we couldn't sustain that with our 10s, but ultimately uh, the 11s picked us up. All right, so next up, let's take a look at another Town Hall 9 hit. We're going to look at, uh, I believe, Amon and Mudit here. Uh, Amon had a nice loon attack. He brought the Valkyrie in here. We'll see that in just a moment. But the entry here comes from the right, and he was trying to take out those two air defenses and maybe get a clan castle lure to boot. Pretty ambitious considering the amount of cam space that he uses. Notice the uh, storage is there on the bottom right exposed. He doesn't have to use any troops to tank for those wizards, and he uses the Valkyrie there to keep tanking while the wizards ultimately step up to the wall, and they're going to take out the air defense from the other side. So beautifully done there by Amon. So cheaply takes out an air defense as well as the point defense cannon over there. The queen takes out the enemy king, and then steps up to get the air defense before the lava hound actually closes in on the scene. She will take out the hound. Just a beautiful, beautiful entry there from Amon. This is where it gets kind of funny. The queen, unfortunately, is going to pop the hound. That's not what we want here. She's not going to stay alive long enough with that ability in hand to actually take care of the pups. So 
Here it is. They're going to kill her immediately. And now we've got this huge wad of pups flying around the base. What are we going to do? Because this is not something that we want to have happen. So he drops in a minion and drops the poison way prematurely. And it's a little bit too far out. He needed to wait on those minions and then start dropping the minions after they'd been killed. So ultimately waste the poison entirely and just says, screw it, I'm going in, bringing in the loons. The, the pups do lock onto him, but this is where he decides, you know what, we'll haste him through and then bring the minions in behind. The minions will chip away at those pups and take out uh, the threat to his balloon army. So things looking pretty good. Weird pathing on the lava hounds there going all the way across the base. He's going to then come in from the bottom right now. Now that he has cover for the uh, balloons, he's got two lava hounds sitting there on that final air defense. And now that it's down, he's got lava hounds up front. They're tanking for his balloons and he's trailing in enough balloons here to get to the flank and behind uh, that lava hound so that it can ultimately go to the final section of this base. Check out the heal though, keeping up those balloons in the core uh, for a long enough time to get those uh, wizard tower and expo combination tanks taken care of. Backside balloons are perfectly timed. They're going to take out that uh, wizard tower. He's got one more building left to get to. Just a beautiful attack there from Amon. Had a little bit of trouble with that CC kill. The poison was comical, but again, one of those things that went our way. Amon able to correct it by dropping the minions in order to take out that threat to his balloons. So another successful attack for WHF. Moving on to the next attack, I believe we've got one by Citrus Mine queued up. So we're going to go ahead... Uh, uh, actually, this one's Vince. We're going to sneak in Vince right before Citrus. And Vince is also bringing uh, one of the attacks that we highlighted a couple of days ago. Um, this is the Quad Lalo, guys. This is a pretty, pretty solid attack. Uh, definitely has a lot of potential in the right hands. And again... Uh, notice the air defenses a little bit closer in. And you guys were wondering about... What was that? Baby dragons you were wondering about? There's a baby dragon in this uh, clan castle. So here we go. We got the, the heroes taking care of it. Uh, boom. We've got the, the baby dragon is down now. And the queen is down as well. So a lot of things taken advantage of uh, here by Vince Munoz prior to the attack. Still has 20 balloons left. And four Lava Hounds in this one, guys. So Wall Breakers go in. The Queen's actually going to sneak into this compartment and start coring out the base a little bit. So really, really high value entry from her. She pops the ability. Going to take out that Wizard Tower as well, which is always hugely valuable. The balloons just go in a rotational fashion around the base. Beautiful haste spell there. She's going to lead those balloons uh, to the Sweeper. And then look at that heal. Look at that heal covering all balloons in question. They're going to take out... Basically, all of the guts of this base. Beautiful, beautiful heal spell there. Finally, the CC Hound comes out, and it's out in front of the uh, group of balloons, and he is uh, taking out the last air defense now. Uh, that Hound is not going to pop, ladies and gentlemen. That's just simply too full on health, and he's got one hero balloon coming in from the top left, going to be responsible for two Archer Towers by itself. Uh, it would be better if that actually wasn't there, because that Hound might have had a chance to pop, but... Uh, no big deal. Looks like the balloons are going to finish out the rest of this base. No problem at all. Pups are everywhere. And uh, we'll go ahead and start fast forwarding it to get through this. And it was just a beautiful, beautiful attack by Vince Munoz. Another huge war from one of the WHF guys. So... Now that that one's out of the way, we do have one more here from Citrus Mind. A uh, really, really incredible attacker. And this one was, I believe, a ground attack. And it was just a, a fantastic plan here. So there it is. Citrus Mind getting the six-pack for us. And 22 Hog Riders in this one. So... Fairly compact base is what he sees. No real spots for double giant bombs. He decides, you know what? Gonna hog the base. He starts out with some funneling with these exposed uh, trash ring buildings and then uses the queen walk uh, to start working her way down the side of the base. Notice here come the archers. You're gonna see... Uh, a wizard and baby drag combination come out, but it looks like the queen has that on lockdown. The rage spell comes down, keeping her up and uh, taking out these, uh, you know, these CC troops. She's also going to get the enemy queen, so huge value there on the walk. Continues to press down the side. Exposed mortar on the top left. Balloon is going to take care of that, no issues at all, and that's going to clear up some uh, even hog pathing for an entry that's going to be coming any moment. So now that the queen uh, starts to work her way into this little enclave. She's distracting a lot of defenses there. Three-point defense, 
has to pop the ability, takes out the uh, first of those three-point defenses, and is now locked on to the second. In come the Hogs. He uses a few for that cannon that was kind of left behind in that upper section. And then heal spells on the Hogs as they work their way through. Look at that heal, though. The spell placement in this raid was phenomenal. Top-notch stuff here. Look at this again as he moves through the second uh, wave of defenses. Again, sitting in heals the entire time. Look at this poison spell. Wow. Not bad at all. He's got poison and two different groups of skellies are killed and the king is slowed up there. And then the hogs are sitting in heals the entire time. They work their way through that final heal and get into the last section. Uh, one of those hogs kind of jukes, trips a bomb, and then the smaller group goes trips the other one. So it just couldn't have ended up any better here. The final group of hogs head to the center, take out the air sweeper, and then it's just uh, the skellies and the king uh, that they have to take out. The queen's made her way all the way around the base. She's still at full health. The king is at full health. And then we do have a trailing balloon coming in from the top of the base, taking this one out. Uh, so really, really nice attack here from Citrus Mine. Really proud of my guys. Uh, top to bottom in the clan. Uh, really have made a significant turnaround since the early part of the CWL season, where WHF, believe it or not, was 1-5. 108, 107 the final here for WHF. One and five though, guys, and WHF has lost one time since, and that was to Spartan's Legacy, who ultimately made it to the semifinals. So there's your stats. 28 three stars apiece. Each clan had nine Town Hall 10 triples. Uh, you know, four to one as far as the Powercock guys pulling it over against us. But that's gonna do it for this episode. This is uh Power Bang, and I will uh, catch you guys in the next one. WHF, NIP champions. Good games to Powercock. Best of luck next season, guys. We hope to see you on the battlefield. That's going to do it, guys. Drop a like for us and uh, drop a comment if you love uh, you some WHF, uh, you know, winning action. That's all I got, guys. Peace out. We'll see you later.